In order to demonstrate the particle node, I'm going to use once again a preset. So I'm going to click over here and then from the node category, I'm going to choose one of those spheres. Let's go with sphere number one and choose replace. And this will create a chain between an emitter and a particle. And by the way, if you want to disconnect this chain, just click anywhere on this line and it will go away. And this means that now we have an individual emitter that we can connect to a new particle that we will create, something like this. Or we can use both of them. And this is what makes this node-based system so flexible. So you can actually create one emitter. In this case, it was renamed to the word sphere and create different particles from the same settings. And just know that if you are adding other stuff, for example, if I'm going to add this force and I'm not going to connect it to any one of these nodes, it will actually behave almost like an adjustment layer. So if nothing is being applied, it is just going to apply itself to everything that it sees above it. And it doesn't really matter if it is above it or beyond it. So I think this is a very flexible system and surely very easy to use. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So I'm just going to delete this force node for the moment and also this second particle instance. And I'm just going to concentrate on what we have in the main particle options. So I'm going to select it. Let's also fold up the sphere emitter and let's just explore a few of the properties. Once again, few of them are self-explanatory. So the shape option will allow us to choose between different particle types. We can choose circle. This is the one that we are using now. Rectangle. We can also set it to cloud. Texture with the same principle of some layer which will be used as a texture in the timeline, similarly to what we've seen before with the text. So let's just move back to the circle part. And underneath, we can see that we can control life in seconds and also life randomness. I also want to change over here under the particle properties, the feather. So I'm just going to reduce it to zero. So we will see those circles in their full glory. Under the particle properties, you will find everything concerning the look of the particle. So size, opacity, color, and in this case, I'm also going to change the transfer mode from the additive one to normal. This way, we will be able to see those circle particles a little bit better in this case. Now, if I'm going to choose the size, obviously, this is going to affect all of them. We can use size random in order to make the simulation more interesting and more lifelike. We can change the opacity and the opacity randomness, similarly to what I showed you. And you can control the particle color. So you can either set it to a single color using this solid one and just pick a different one from this color chip or use one of the other methods. So I'm just going to say random from gradient in this case. And I'm going to fold down the color gradient to show you how you can control it. So you have these nodes which you can move around. If you don't need one of them, you can just throw it to the left or to the right. Doesn't really matter. This little tiny square will allow you to click and choose a different color. And of course, you can move it across the gradient. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because we told it to use random from gradient. So it's just going to pick different ones from this color spectrum. Now note that under most of those graphs, you have this presets button. Click on it in order to apply one of the built in presets, which is always a great starting place. So in this case, let's just switch it to color 10, choose apply, and you will see that it will affect our particles. Now I'm just going to fold up the particle properties, open up the over life and mention that we can control the over life parameters using size and opacity. And this is basically the same mechanism. I'm just going to give it more space so we can see that we can choose between linear graphs a Bezier one, which will allow you to create some nice handles, or you can even draw the graph and then switch to one of those modes in order to get more control. As before, click on the presets in order to apply one of the built in ones. Let's go with fade in and out Bezier, click apply. And for the opacity, once again, I'm going to click on the presets and choose some blinking one, something like this and choose apply. In order to see it in action, let's just create a quick RAM preview. 
So you can see how this affects the particles. They are just flashing in and out according to what we are seeing in this graph. And those graphs are going to be repetitive across the whole experience when you are working with the Stardust effect.